Hello everyone, welcome back to another session for our agriculture and rural development for Nabard. Uh, for today's topic, we're going to continue with our previous session, which was on classification of field crops. Okay, so for today, we are going to do something on the classification of field crops on the basis of economic importance, as all the plants and the crops, they are grown for a different purpose or for different uh, economic importance. And that's where we have subdivided the field crops into 10 categories all right the first one here is a cereal crop okay guys and second one is forage we have fiber crop sugar crops we have narcotic or it does it's also known as a drug crops uh, we have root and tuber crops we have legumes number fifth is oil seed crops and we also have some of the vegetable crops and the last one is condiments and spices okay guys so uh, moving forward with our different type of uh, classification, the first one here is on cereal crops. So what are these cereal crops? Uh, you guys must have heard about the cereal crops within the Green Revolution also, right? So cereal crops are the crops which are mainly or mostly grown for their edible seeds, okay? And these are also known as the grain crops. So these are known as grain crops where the seeds or the grains are you have an economic purpose okay so the first one here example i would give is wheat right we also have barley corn rice uh, rye oats and millet so these all of these examples or these crops they belong to the cereal crops and i hope that is clear and india is also the largest producer in the uh, cereal crops right guys uh coming to the next slide we are going to talk about the forage crops so forage crops are the crops which are mainly grown for the purpose for feed okay all right they are mainly grown for feed for the livestock and these are grazed by animals or these are harvested for green chop as hay, as silage, or soiling as well as, and these are all known as the uh, forage crops. Uh, another uh, a point that I want to make it clear out here is that um, forage uh, crops, especially forage crops, uh, the dry matter content should be above 25%. And when you're asking what this dry matter content is, uh, dry matter content is uh, basically a plant or a material of plants where the water content is low all right so where we have taken out the water or the moisture from that normal crop so once you dry it then the dry matter content uh, will be higher okay as the water or the moisture in the plant reduces the dry matter content increases so for forage crops especially the dry matter content should be above 25 percent all right so for example that i would like to give for forage crops is that these cereal crops that we normally grow like wheat sorghum and all of that rye as well okay so all these crops can be also used as uh, the forage crops all right so once we harvest the grains for its economic use then we can use the other materials like the leaves like the stems right we can chop it up we can harvest it and right after that we can just keep it for drying for some time and after that we can use it as a forage crops all right so i hope this is clear um, another uh, slide we're going to talk about here is fiber crops so fiber crops as the name suggests fiber so uh, we get this idea that fiber crops are the crops which are grown for the fiber to extract the fiber all right so these are used for making textiles uh, you can also make ropes as well as you can go for rugs uh example for this uh fiber crops would be your the famous one is cotton right we also have jute we have flax uh, sun hemp kenoff and seal so these are the crops or the uh, crops which are where the economic purpose is mainly for its textile or it for the fiber purpose okay so i hope that is clear um try to remember as you guys are studying uh, all this classification guys i try to remember the examples okay examples are very very important whenever you're studying for agriculture right so 
Okay, now coming to the oilseed crops. Uh, as the name suggests again, the crops which are grown for their to extract the oil, uh, oil itself. So uh, the crops which are grown for extracting of oil from their seeds. Okay, it can also not only uh, from the seeds, it can also from the, from the leaves or from the flowers as well. Um, some of the most common oil seed uh, crops are uh, rape, mustard, groundnut, peanut, sunflower, safflower, soybean, sesame, castor bean, linseed, and flax. So basically, at India, we follow these nine um, basic uh, oil seed crops, right? So these are under the oil seed crops. So we can also say that uh, there's also a revolution for these oil seed crops. I'm not sure whether you guys remember in our first uh, lecture, we studied about revolutions in India, right? And one of the revolutions was done for uh, oil seed crops and it was known as the Yellow Revolution. And this is also one of the reasons why India is also the, in the highest producing uh, country in terms of the oil seed, and it also exports a lot of uh, uh, a lot of um, oil seeds, right? Uh, okay. Um, another slide we have out here is on the sugar crops. The name su uh, self suggests the crops which are mainly grown for extract the sugar out of it, right? So these are used for the production of sugar. Okay. And examples. A uh, famous example, sugarcane, right? Wherever we go nowadays, wherever we go, we always buy sugarcane. Uh, the vendors selling out the sugarcane. Um, we also have sh uh, sugar beet, and the last one we have sorghum. So this sweet sorghum is also another variety of sorghum, where the stems or the leaves are uh, basically sweet. And from that as well, we extract uh, different, uh, extract the uh, con sugar content as well. Okay, I hope this is clear. And now coming to our next slide, we have on the root and tuber crops. So uh, the underground part is the economic uh, part of these type of crops, all right? So the leaf, the, uh, till now, we have been talking about all the crops where the uses has been from the upper part, right? But for on this root and tuber crop, we basically, the economic part is mostly underground, which is below the soil. Okay, right, so we have these are crops which are grown for underground parts like roots. We also have tubers, bulbs, rhizomes, forms, and stems. Uh, if you guys, right now, most probably you guys might not have idea about all these terms, but as we go forward with our course, we'll be discussing all these terms in detail. All right, so uh, for now. Uh, it's better to understand that all these parts of the plant or the crop, these are underground, okay? Uh, examples of these are carrots, we have radish, turnips, okay? We have onions, onions and garlic, we usually have, we call it bulbs, right? And for roots, we have carrots, radish, turnips, these are all roots, all right? So rhizomes would be your ginger, example, I'm giving here. Um, corms, uh, corms would be uh, one uh, very famous uh, plant or uh, ornaments of plants actually known as the gladulus. All right. The gladulus has these corms. Um, stem tubers, we have your colocasias. And we also have uh, these potatoes, sweet potatoes, which are right. So these are uh, some of the examples I've given out here. And to make it more clear, I've just given a very uh, simple diagrammatic view of all the tubers and the root crops that are found that you usually eat every day. Um, so examples, these we have carrot, parsnip, we have ginger, algae radish, right? sweet potato, beetroot as well, okay? And these are sweet potatoes again, right? So these are some of the examples of the root crops and the tuber crops. I hope that is clear. Um, okay, coming to the legumes. So uh, when we're talking about legumes, legumes are the crops which belong to this family known as the leguminosae. All right, and uh, they have a very high nitrogen content. The first thing that you guys need to remember here is high nitrogen content. And we mostly use the 
uh, seed. The economic part is the seed for this. Okay, and now coming to the examples, when you uh, come up with examples, it makes it more clearer uh, as to what these legumes are. So, um, soybeans, peanuts, we also have peas, all the beans basically, and all the pulses, okay? The beans, the peas, and the pulses, they all belong to legumes, all right? So, this is, so legumes, I would say that these are a family, all right? So, they have a same morphological or the botanical characteristics so that's why they are grouped together under the legumes all right and since they have a high nitrogen content they also have this ability for fixing nitrogen all right so then they can have it in some biotic relationship with other microorganisms which are found in the soil all right so coming to that we are going to talk more in this uh, we're going to discuss more as we go forward with the course Right, for now, uh, just try to understand what these legumes are, right? And these are more mainly grown for their edible seed, right? So, uh, for example, even peas, right? The peas, the round thing that you see in a piece, these are the seeds, all right? So, we don't eat the after covering, we don't eat the fruit, but we eat the seeds, right? So, uh, example, even for pulses like dal, right? So, even those, we eat only the seeds and not the leaves of the plant. Okay, so uh, I hope that is clear. And now coming to another uh, category we have is narcotic or the drug crops. So this narcotic or the drug crops, these are the categories where the crops are mainly grown for a narcotic or for a drug purpose. Okay, an example for this would be poppy, right, of opium. Uh, we also have tobacco. So for tobacco, we get, and right here, I've just given some of the um, examples of it, right? Uh, so from uh, tea or coffee, we get we from we get caffeine, right? And we also from cocoa, we get uh, theophylline. So these things have a medicinal or drug purpose, all right? From coffee, we get codeine, which is good for cough, right? Um, we also have mint, from where we get this extract, this chemical called known as menthol, right? For we also have foxglove. Where we get this digitalin, right? And from tobacco, nicotine is extracted. So in this way, these plants or these crops are the crops where they have this extract or the chemical substance, they have these chemical substances which have a lot of medicinal value. And the crops which are grown mainly or for the purpose of medicinal use or in the pharmaceutical industries or as in narcotics or as a drugs, and these are known as or these are these can be categorized as this narcotic or the drug crops coming to the vegetable or the garden crops uh, i think all of you guys must be aware of what vegetables are right we eat it every day right so uh, the vegetable crop these are mainly grown for the purpose um the economic pur economic purpose is for especially for the edible leaves right we also have the fruits the stems as well as the seeds Right, so examples, vegetable examples, it's very easy. You have tomatoes, which we eat every day. Uh, here we have uh, this brinjal, chilies, um, cucumbers, pumpkin. All of the, these are examples of vegetables. So uh, vegetables, we can get a countless and countless of examples. Even if you don't remember, try to remember. Uh, in the exam, even if, even if you don't remember, try to remember what you ate in the morning. All right, so you must have had some kind of vegetable in the morning. So those will be your examples. Right, so this is the most easiest one. Uh, coming to the uh, condiment crop, right? So condiments, these are which are grown and consumed as condiments. And what are condiments? Condiments are uh, the category or type uh, where we use the, uh, where the plants or the crops, these are used mainly to impart the flavor, right? And also for this aroma, right? For especially, we don't, uh, use it as a vegetable, as a subji or whatever, but we mainly use it to impart flavor, right? As well as for the aroma, right? <coughs> Example, uh, or maybe for the garnishing as well, right? Garnishing at last. Uh, you must have seen your mom making 
um, a doll, and on top of that, she will be she will be garnishing it with <clears throat> coriander or some of that sort. So these are all these things will come under condiments. Case example: coriander. We have mint. We have also have chilies as well. We can also go for those uh, other condiments like jeera, right? We can go for bay leaves, which be your another uh, condiment. Uh, in Hindi, I think it's called page patta. Uh, we have cinnamon. Dalcini, right? We also have jeera, which is also known as coriander itself. Um, oh no, sorry, coriander is dhania, right? Um, see, we have star and ice, turmeric. All these will come under your condiments, right? So the first thing that you guys need to remember is to impart the color, to impart flavor to import some of the gods and can be used as a garnishing as well. All right, so I hope this is clear, but <clears throat> all right. Um, next one here is classification, which is based on the purpose, all right? So based on the purpose, uh, field props can be classified into, uh, first one is the cash for emergency crops. Um, the second one we have is a cash crop. The third one is cover crops. We also have green manure crops and the law. Uh, we have companion crops as well as the last one we have here is a silage crops. And um, coming to the classification based on purpose, the first one was catch or the emergency uh, crops, right? So catch or emergency crops are the crops which are mainly or uh, the main aim for growing this crops. As, as the name suggests, emergency, okay? So whenever your um, plant uh, or your main crop is failing, then we use or we grow these catch or emergency crops as a substitute, right? So in that way, even if your main crop is, um, has, been, uh, has failed due to unfavorable conditions, yet you still have a substitute, uh, for for a crop which is also known as the catch or the emergency crop all right see uh, in this picture i've given is millet millet can be used as a, a substitute for some of the uh, crops like cotton as well so uh, if your main crop fails then why not why to worry you have a catch or emergency crop which we can just grow right so millet is an example of such type of crop all right um coming to the cover crop uh, cover crops are the crops which are mainly grown along with the main crop in not uh, on the uh, not on the same field or in the same plot. Actually, they are actually grown in the same plot, but not uh, but in between where the main crop is grown. Uh, for especially for ground cover, all right. Uh, they mostly follow this uh, cover cropping uh, for covering the soil all right and when we cover the soil definitely there will be less erosion as the roots of these plants will be able to hold the soil and when you hold the soil even if there's water runoff then definitely these uh, crops can hold the soil and they, the top soil of the soil uh, won't go off right so this, the main purpose is for soil erosion all right and another one here is it can also be used as mulching uh, i'm not sure whether you've come across this word mulching so what we do uh, we can also call it as a live mulch as well um main thing that this mulching it does is that it can conserve the water right and also another advantage this is the first the second and uh, another advantage that this um, cover crop can have is that it can also reduce the growth of weed we've already talked about what weed is in our previous these are unwanted plants right which compete with the main crop so uh, since uh, we are not allowing we're not leaving the soil barren and between where the main crop is grown as we've already grown the uh, cover crops right and because of that what happens is that they will be covering up the barren soil and they won't allow any other plant 
or like weeds to grow. So this can also be another method to reduce weed growth in that particular uh, plant. Um, right. So a very famous uh, examples that I would like to give here is that some legumes are also used as cover crops. We also have a uh, rye. Okay, rye is also no grown. Clovers are also grown. So examples: legumes, rye, clover. Right. So these are some of the examples for y'all. I hope this is clear. Now coming to cash crops, right? So cash crops, uh, as the name suggests, these crops are mainly grown for the cash purpose or extensively for income itself. Okay. Uh, so what we do here is that uh, these cash crops uh, can be uh, grown along with your main crop, which is used for subsistence, right? But here, these cash crops are mainly these are mainly short living plants. Okay, it can be short living, all right? So the where the life cycle is low or it's short, or we can just harvest at any time, okay? So they are mainly grown for income generation, extra income or more of income generation, all right? And so one thing about this cash crop is that this cash crop, for example, I'm gonna take sugarcane, okay? So if you're taking a sugarcane as a cash crop, uh, for one farmer, it can be cash crop for that farmer. But in another plot, uh, if another farmer is growing sugarcane, it may not be a cash crop for him because he may be using it for his own purpose consumption. But in the other plot, if the other farmer is not using it for his own subsistence or for his own consumption, then if it's growing it for, especially only for income generation for extra money, then definitely uh, that's how this cash crop can vary for every farmer, okay? So here in this uh, live example, I've given a sugarcane as a cash crop, all right? So here they're using this the crops mainly for income and for income generation, okay? Another one out here is a uh, green manure crop. So green manure crops are kind of like um, cover crops, all right? But don't get confused. So green manure crops are, are the crops which are mainly grown, only grown for uh, to produce a green manure. Um, when you're asking what these green manures are, these have a very high organic content. Um, mostly legumes are used as green leg, uh, manures, all right? So what we're doing is here is that uh, take a green manure crop, uh, any plant uh, in a barren land, or if, it's, if your main crop is also growing at that point, I can just incorporate this green manure in your plant, for example, legumes. I can just grow legumes in between the main crop. And while it's still living, you can just um, turn it over with the soil, okay? So, for example, let me just draw it out here for you. Okay. Here, suppose this is a plot of land, and this is your main crop, right? And you've grown some of the green manures in between, like this. Main crop, green manure crops main crop okay so you will take this green manure crop and this while it's in the early stage right you can just uh, chop it off harvest it um, and turn it over along with the soil all right so you can turn it all harvest it turn it all with the soil so what happens is that uh you can just see uh, in this picture that this man is actually chopping off this green manure which has grown out here and he is um using it and turning it over with the soil itself right so what happens is that these soil on this plant uh, this thing out here right it's going to decompose in the soil and once it decomposes in that soil itself it's going to provide it's going to act as a manure right so in that way it will increase the organic content of that particular soil in that area all right so this is one of the main reasons why it's grown. Uh, another reason, uh, another uh, feature or advantages of growing green manure crops are that number one is high organic content. And we also have, uh, it increases the, or it increases the soil structure, or it makes the soil structure of that area better, right? In that way, once the soil structure is better, 
then uh, it's definitely going to help in uh, the water holding capacity of the soil. So when we're talking about water holding capacity, uh, it means that it's, it's the ability of the, of the soil to retain the water, all right? So that it doesn't, the water doesn't leach off, right? So there won't be less uh, soil erosion, okay? So this is the water holding capacity. Increases the water holding capacity. And also another example would be it decreases the growth of weed. Okay. So these are some of the examples. Or sorry, some of the advantages of green manure crop. I hope it's clear. Example I would give here is that all the legumes, right? Legumes. We already talked about what legumes are. And we also have sun hem. As an example, uh, I would like to give an example of Cespenia. Uh, jot down all these uh, examples as you guys are uh, watching the lecture, all right, guys? It's very important to jot down the um, examples. Um, another one, we also can use clovers as well. Um, another example of a legume, which can be used as a, uh, which can be used as a green manure, would be cowpea. Cowpea makes a really good uh, green manure. Okay? And we also have cluster bean. Let me just show you that here. Cluster bean. Okay. So these are some of the examples of green manure. I hope that is clear. Okay, guys. Um, all right. Now let's come to another uh, category, which is known as companion crop. The companion crops are the crops which are grown or incorporated along with the main crops. So we'll be growing a lot of other different uh, crops at the same time at the same field. Okay. Uh, example out here uh, is a companion cropping pattern uh, grown on maize and pigeon pea. So what they did here was that they grew the pigeon pea as well as the maize at the same time. All right. So why go for companion planting? So this companion planting or in companion crops, they are um, the benefit of each other. All right. So uh, example for this pigeon pea, these are a legume crop, right? So this would also, uh, since they have a high nitrogen content, they have the ability to fix the nitrogen in the soil. And maize on the other hand needs a lot of nitrogen. And that's why these uh, pigeon pea, since it has ability to fix the nitrogen, unavailable nitrogen into available nitrogen for these other plants so and that's with the our compa companion crops all right so this is another example that i would give another very famous example uh, of companion planting is all uh, there is this one planting term known as the tree sister planting okay guys So on tree sister planting, uh, what we basically do here is that we grow some, for example, we take maize, okay? So we'll be taking a maize, all right? And we will take some um, peas or legumes again, beans, let's say. We take, we're taking French beans, all right? And we can take some kind of uh, pumpkin. Let's take a pumpkin. So these are creepers, right? So pumpkins are creepers. So, so this is, we take, we've taken maize, we've taken pumpkin, and we've taken some beans, right? So these are, this can be called as a tree sister planting, where the maize, the legumes, which is the beans, is going to give a lot of nitrogen to the maize out here and how is the, how will this maize help the uh, pumpkin out here uh, it's going to provide a stack for it so that it can this maize because it has a sturdy stem right and very erect and a sturdy stem so this can this creeper can crawl over the maize and it can act as a support for this so in this way this is known as a companion planting right so this whole crop can be known as a companion crop this can be known as a companion crop this can be also known as a companion crop right because they give uh, they have or they give benefits for each other in this planting system all right so i hope that is clear uh, now another last one we have here is a silage crop these are also known as and silage crops okay um 
In sandwich crabs, these are mainly grown for uh, the feed of the livestock. Don't get confused with the previous one where we talked about fodder crops, right? Uh, the only difference here uh, between the sandwich and the fodder crops is that. Just give me a minute. So these are used as feed. And the difference here is that, see, um, this standing corn, it is used as the silage of the harvest. After you harvest the corn, right, the maize, the corn that we eat, then this becomes useless, right? So right after that, we can just use it. Or we can just harvest it, chop it off. And we usually put it in a pit or in trenches, right? And we let it decompose out there. And like how decompose after it's a bit decomposed, we take it out and we use it for the feed of the livestock. We feed it. Okay. Uh, this is a difference. So here, um, another uh, point that I want to uh, convey you guys is that uh, in silage crops, uh, what we do is that we go for early mature early harvesting. Okay. Uh, why do we do so? Is because um, so as the the protein content of these crops they reduce right and the fiber content they increase as it matures right and we do need the protein content to feed our livestock right and so that is the main reason why we go for early harvesting as the protein content is still high at that point of harvest right so this is the difference between uh, this is what our silage crops are all right Coming to another classification we have here is classification based on lifespan. Okay, so based on the lifespan, we categorize these field crops into three main categories. The first one is the annual crops. We also have biennial crops. The third one is perennial crops. All right, so what is the lifespan for the plant? So first lifespan, we would uh, define it as the time when it has been sowed or from the seed till the whole lifespan of when it started reproducing right until it dies off okay so this is the what a lifespan of a plant would be and the first one here is annual crops annual crops are basically short-lived okay so it means that the plants or these crops which come under this category they complete their life cycle in one season all right so uh when we talk about in one season it can be for like a one year or maybe for a six months in plant lifespan term, okay? So in one growing season itself, they complete the whole life, cy life cycle where, from where we started sowing the seeds till it reproduces, where it flowers, okay? And then it, com it becomes exhausted. Um, another example that I, another point that I want to point out out here is that in animal crops these are mostly field crops all right so field crops are mostly animal crops so you'll have lots and plenty of uh, examples for this so the examples out here would be your wheat we have barley rice maize sorghum we also have faba bean we have lentils chick chickpea lupin flax soybean sesame sunflower and safflowers so these are some of the examples for your annual uh, crops all right i hope this is clear and now coming to a biennial crop uh in biennial crops we have um, it's quite opposite all right not really opposite but uh from this word or the term known as biennial you get that by which means two right so it means two growing season okay so in a two growing season it means that the plants or the crops out here they complete their life cycle in two season or maybe two years for example right two years okay so um okay let me tell you something about more about the growth habits of these final crops um Let's divide them into the first year, okay? And in the second one, let's divide them into the second year, all right? In the first year, they will have this proper growth and development where they will establish uh, to be a new plant, all right, from the seed. So these are mostly vegetative growth. And uh, coming through the 
second year they'll start having a reproductive growth all right so how do you make sure that these how do you differentiate between this vegetative and reproductive growth is that uh once it start to flower all right once it start to flower then it has reached the reproductive growth all right so this is like the uh, characteristic or the feature of when a plant is uh, in a ready for in a reproductive growth so it means that it will start to flower okay in the first one it'll be only leaves plant leaves stems will be there but in the second year they'll start to flower for example if you're walking in a park and if you start seeing flowers blooming then it means that they are at the reproductive stage and if the flower hasn't reached its full bloom then it means that it is still in the veg vegetative stage okay all right so this uh mostly these vinyl crops these are mostly grown uh, during the winter season okay where there is a low temperature uh, low temperature maybe they will be uh, we will be growing these uh, vinyl crops right and the second year right in the second season when uh, spring arrives or when summer arrives which is needed for flowering then they will start having or reproducing right or flower all right, so this is something about the differentiates or the growth habits of these vinyl uh, crops. An example that I would give out here is onions. Onions are also um, vinyl. We have sweet clover with sugar beet, right? And for example, an onion in the first season or in the first year, they will have just establishments of the leaves or of their, of their bulbs, right? Root developing maybe proper. And the second year, it will start to flower, right? So this is how or what a vinyl crop is. I hope this is clear. Coming to another type of category, which is known as perennial crops. As the name suggests, perennial, which means evergreen or indefinite, right? So they have an indefinite lifespan. So they have their lifespan, it will be more than two years, okay? So they live from year to year, all right? And they are either woody or herbaceous. Uh, we already discussed what woody and what herbaceous plants are. Woody plants, um, let me just recall it for you guys. Woody plants where the, uh, the stem of the plant is hard. And if it's herbaceous, the stem of the plant or the crop is soft. Okay, so this is something about the perennial crops another thing is that they can uh, reproduce the seeds uh, every year but even after reproducing the seeds even after flowering they do not die off okay they still continue to grow right and year after year they still continue to grow it means that the lifespan is also indefinite okay um another thing uh, that i want to uh, point out out here is that this woody oh sorry uh, this vinyl or uh, this perennial uh, crops they can uh, give out their seeds every year or maybe in an alternate year they have two times uh, they give out the seeds every year or alternate okay so this is something about it and examples i would give here these are sugarcane we have white clover and alpha alpha uh, as you guys are studying i always point out on examples examples are really very important uh, from the exam point of view as well so as i'm explaining things to you don't forget to jot down the examples every single time okay um all right coming to another type of classification uh we have on classification according to the root depth so these plants or these crops also they have uh, different <laughs> different types of uh, root structures as well as the root line so on that basis we have uh, classified them into three major categories the first one is shallow root crop the second one is intermediate root crop and the last one is deep rooted crops all right so now coming to what the each of these root crops or type of crops are the in shallow root crops right so let me just draw a, a diagram for you guys right so this is the soil which is the underground part right the lead the stem is here and then it's growing these are the roots right and the length of the root from the underground part right from the core the crown root uh, system if it's around one meter then it is a shallow rooted crop right Okay, so the example would be your wheat. Okay, we have 
um, we have rye. And another example I would give here is barley. So these are some of the crops uh, which has a shallow rooted. It means that it is not more than one meter. Okay. And if it's intermediate, then the length of this root would be from one meter to 1.5 meter. Okay. Example out here is given this one. This is a bean. Uh, this is a faba bean. Okay. So faba beans or any kind of beans, they have a root length of about 1 to 1.5 meter. Uh, when, when we're coming down to the deep-rooted crops, and deep-rooted crops, the size or the length of the root is very long. So it, it has about more than uh, 1.5 meter. If the root length is more than 1.5 meter, then it comes under this category of deep-rooted crops. Example would be alpha, alpha, okay? All right, so this is clear. So these are the three different types of uh, uh, types of categories of crops based on the root length. All right, guys, so I hope this is clear. Um, that's all for today, guys. Uh, if you guys have any more queries or if you guys have any more doubts, don't forget to drop in your uh, queries in our Telegram group. Or you can also contact any of the team members and we are ready to help. And we'll be meeting for the next session with another new topic. Right till then, uh, study hard and we'll be meeting for the next session.